Yeah, it's like a fraternity. Okay. So the bottom number here is your first, how you generate your first term. And then the top number is going to be how you generate your last term. And then whatever is in front of it is the rule to produce uh, the sequence that you want. And then the sigma means sum or add them all up. Okay? Got it? So let's just first extend this sigma notation. It says evaluate each arithmetic series described. Sum from k equals 1 to 35 of 5k minus 2. So I generate the first term by plugging in this number. So I plug in what? 1. Plug in 1 and you get 5 times 1 is minus 2 is 3. Plus, let's generate another term. Okay? Plug in what? 2. 2 times 5 is minus 2 is 8. Plus, Connor, you're on a roll. What's the next number I plug in? 3. 5 times 3 is 15. Minus 2 is 13. Okay, 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 okay. One second in time. One question in time. Uh, so, so, 3 was for k equals 1. It says k equals 1. Eight is for k equals two. You go all the way up to thirty-five. Yeah. Boys and girls, what are you going up by each time? Five. Now, I don't actually do all thirty-five, but what would the thirty-fifth term be? What would I do to get the thirty-fifth term? K equals thirty-five, I would get. 5 times 35 is 175 minus 2 is 173. Now, take a while to add all those up, wouldn't it? So can I show you what? All right. Move your notes over to the next page. N is the number of terms. Two is English for dose. Got it? This I do not know, but arithmetic should always be a common difference. There should never be multiplication. Okay. All right. Now. What? Oh, don't worry about that. All right. So I'm just writing an example. Okay. So uh, the second part says sum of an infinite arithmetic series. So we talked about finite. Uh, let's do an infinite one. Watch this. Here's an arithmetic series. 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus dot, 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 dot. I'll go on to infinity. What What is this going to add up to? It's just going to continue to get bigger, right? So the sum of an infinite arithmetic series either goes to positive infinity or negative infinity. Now, if you don't believe me, watch this one. Okay, so Han asked a question about this. Let's say we have 1,000 and your next term 
would be 999 plus 998, okay? It is getting bigger, right? But eventually, aren't you going to have this? I mean, isn't that going to happen somewhere in the sequence? So therefore, they will cancel out, and you'll just end up with negative results moving forward. So if it's infinite, there's no way. If it's arithmetic and it's infinite, it's either going to go with positive infinity or negative infinity. It's all there is to it. So we can only add up kind of finite uh, arithmetic series and sequences. So go back to your previous problem. Is this infinite or finite? Finite. It has an end right there. There you go. So we say that the sum of how many terms? 35 terms is equal to what is n? 35 times the quantity. What's a sub 1? 3 plus what's the last term? 173 divided by Two. Folks, 1 and 35 are not my terms. They're what I use to generate my terms. 3 is the first term. 173 is my last term. So I multiply these out. What do you get? Somebody, calculator, go. Three thousand eighty. Okay, thank you, Connor. Okay, let's do number 10. Any problems that we do not do together in class, that's your assignment. Okay, so whatever we get through, the better off you are. Number 10, what's your first term going to be? Negative 6. What's your second term going to be? Negative 3. What's your third term going to be? Zero. What's your fourth term going to be? Do you see that it's arithmetic and that's going up by three every time? Plus dot, 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 plus what's the last term? What's three times 45? 135 minus nine. 126. Okay, I want to add up those terms. And as opposed to adding up 45 terms, I'm going to use my formula for the sum of a finite series. Sum of how many terms? 45 terms is equal to the number of terms 45 times. What's the first term? Negative 6. What's the last term? Divided by 2. So I've got uh, 120 divided by 260, 60 times 45, 2,700. Can you do those type of problems? Good. Look at number 11. Okay, again, in order to add them up, this is the, this is the formula we use. Do you know how many terms you're going to add up here? 14. What is n? 14. What's your first term? What's your last term? Divide by 2. Somebody, calculator, multiply it out. Go. 13. 16. This is what Garrett got. Can anybody else confirm it? Okay. Can you do a problem like that? Good, flip it over. Please look at problem number 15. 15, sum of how many terms? 16 terms is equal to how many terms? 16 times what's the first term? What's the last term? We don't know. Divided by 2. We don't know the last term, folks. It says dot, dot, dot. We know that it will be the 16th term, but we don't know um, what 
what the term actually is. In our last lesson on Friday, didn't we talk about how to find that term? Because we have a formula. A sub 16 is going to be equal to your first term, which is 20 plus the difference. What's the difference? 7 times n minus 1, or 16 minus 1. Everybody remember that formula from Friday? That's the explicit formula for an arithmetic uh, sequence. 125, because the difference of each term is 7. That's how I got 7. So let me multiply it out. What? 1160? Okay. Yep. Everybody got it? Questions? Going once? Twice? I won't use the recursive definition. Any other questions? Going once. Going twice. Three times. Gone. Flip it over. Another sheet. Finite geometric series. Evaluate the related series of each sequence. So this is a sequence. What are you multiplying by each time? 6. You want to do 2 plus 12 plus 72 plus 432. Can you do that? Good. Let's move on. Just add them up. Evaluate each geometric series described. Now, people had trouble with this, and I will say that, in all honesty, the trouble is with order of operations. So let's just pay attention to what's going on here so we can all keep our ducks in a row, okay? What is... I'm going to just start to generate some pieces of the series so I can understand what the ratio is, okay? What do I plug in first? 1. What is 1 minus 1? Zero. What is anything to the zero power? One. So when I plug in one, I get one. What should I plug in now? Two. Two minus one is one. Four to the one is four. Now I will plug in three. Three minus one is two. Four squared is 16 plus dot, 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 plus, what would the last term be? 4 to the four to the 6th power. So, what is your ratio? What is it going up by each time? 4. You're multiplying by 4 every time. That's your ratio. Now, summing geometric series is different than summing arithmetic series. So, let's write some notes on the next page at the bottom. Sum of a finite geometric series is that S sub n is equal to A sub 1 times 1 minus R to the nth over 1 minus R. So what's really nice about a geometric series is, do you need to know the last term? No, you don't need to know the last term. All you have to know is the first term and R and the number of terms. As long as we know that, we're okay. Everybody got that written down? How about now? No, N is the number of terms. So you could have the hundredth term could be 4 billion. It's like saying that uh, there's 28 students in this class, so number 28 is a student. No, number 28 represents a student, but the student's name is Hannah Savakul. So you you know that there's a certain number of terms, but you got to use the rule in order to generate the actual terms to find out what they are. So let's go back, and now let's sum this. The sum of how many terms? Seven terms is equal to the first term one times 
1 minus what's the ratio? 4 to the 6th? No, 4 to the nth. What is that? 7. 4 to the 7th. Divided by 1 minus 4. Take my calculator. Parentheses 1 minus 4 to the 7th. Parentheses divided by parentheses. 1 minus 4. Negative 3. 5,461. Any questions how I came up with that result? One once, twice, thrice. Look at number six. Okay, let's generate the first term. You plug in one. One minus one is negative six to the zero. One. Now we plug in two. Two minus one is one, and negative six to the one is negative six. Plug in 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. Negative 6 to the 2 is positive 36. So what's happening to the negative sign? Whoop. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to alternate back and forth. So the next one would be negative 216 uh, plus dot, dot, dot. Do we need to know the last term in order to do the sequence or the series? No. We say that the sum of how many terms? 8 is equal to... The first term times 1 minus, be careful with this, what's your ratio? Negative 6 to what power? 8. Divided by 1 minus negative 6. So you can tell that the bottom is going to be 1 plus 6. So I get 7 on the bottom. On the top, 1 minus parentheses negative 6 to the 8th. Negative 6 to the 8th, is that going to be positive or negative? It's going to be positive. And then the 1 minus will make it negative. So you get that divided by 7 is negative Two hundred thirty-nine thousand nine hundred forty-five. Got that? Yes or no? Okay, let's try two more on this front page. Let's look at number eight. What's different about number eight compared to number six? Super important. You see this? Doesn't it, doesn't have the parentheses around the negative, right? So the negative is not being taken to a power. True or false, every term in this sequence will be negative. True. So let's plug in 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. And then we make it negative. So it's negative 1. We'll plug in 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 to the 1 is Then we make it negative. Negative 2. Now we plug in 3. 3 minus 1, 2. 2 squared, make it negative, negative 4. What's the next term going to be, obviously? Negative 8. What is our ratio? What are we multiplying by every time? We're multiplying by 2 every time. So R is equal to 2. Even though we have negative results, negative comes from this negative sign right there. So we have negative, uh, we have positive 2 for R. So the sum of how many terms? 9 terms is equal to the first term. Negative 1 times 1 minus R, or 2 to the 9th, over 1 minus 2. Uh, if you, you know, what's 1 minus 2? Negative 1. So the negative 1s are going to cancel, aren't they? So you just got 1 minus 2 to the 9th. Anybody?
Okay, negative 511. All right, and we'll do 11 together. Again, try to generate your term so you can tell what R is going to be. Now, look back at your previous example. R is 4. Look at what number was being taken to a power. 4. For 6, uh, R was negative 6, and that's the number being taken to the power. And for number 8, 2 is the number being taken to the power, so that's R. So what is going to be R in number 11? R is negative 3. And if you don't believe me, then go ahead and generate some terms. 1 minus 1 is 0. What's negative 3 to the 0? 1 times 4 is 4. We do another one. Uh, we plug in 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. What's negative 3 to the 1? Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Always whatever number you're taking to the n minus 1 power. Then we plug in 3. What's 3 minus 1? 2. Negative 3 squared is 9 times 4 is 36. So you can see that the plus minuses are going to alternate because the negative is located uh, you know, with the power. Does this verify for you? Are you convinced that r is equal to negative 3 now? So the sum of how many terms? 10 is equal to, first term is 4 times 1 minus the quantity, negative 3 to the 10th, divided by 1 minus negative 3. 1 minus negative 3 and 4 will cancel, won't they? So you just end up with uh, 1 minus negative 3 to the 10th, 59,048. Okay, flip it over. Right. Our cross of 19 and 20. Please look at 17. I would be trying to find the sum of how many terms? Seven terms. What's the first term? One times one minus what is R? Negative five. So you had to look at this and identify that R was negative five. So I have negative five to the seventh divided by What's 1 minus negative 5? 6. So that's what we calculate. Thirteen twenty-one. All right. Any questions there? Okay. You don't complete 19 and 20, but you do the others. Flip it over, last part. Okay. Remember, you have two work days, tomorrow and Wednesday, to work on your study guide, which I handed to you, as well as your assignment. Now, I, I need to make a point to you here, because we haven't looked at infinite geometric series. What is R? 2. Think about it. If you were to add that up, what would that go to? Infinity, right? Watch this. What's R in this case? One half. Now, we'll see how smart you guys are. Let's look at these sums. What's a half plus a fourth? Three fourths. 
And then if you take three fours plus an eighth, seven eighths plus a sixteenth, plus thirty second. You're right, it will always be one less than the denominator. But if you were to add this up an infinite number of times, you would get very, very, very close to the number one. So look at the difference. Here your R value is greater than two, it diverges, it goes to infinity. Here your R value is less than one, it converges, it goes to one half. If you flip over the last page, you can write down notes so we can do this. This is the easiest example of them all. Write down sum of infinite geometric series. You have to test your R value first. Once you know your R value, you can determine whether it converges or diverges. If the absolute value of R is greater than or equal to 1, then the series diverges to either positive infinity or negative infinity. And we don't even need to try to find the sum. We just say it diverges, no point. You wonder will you use this again? Uh, calculus 2 is just littered with this content. It's, it's super fun. Okay? So don't think for a second that you won't see this in the future. That's why we're covering a little bit of it so that so we don't do really any of it in calculus. The second part says if the absolute value of R is less than 1, then the sum is... The first term divided by 1 minus r. It's a very, very simple formula. And we could prove it for you, uh, but we just don't have the time. Maybe we'll do that on the junior's last days. No, you're right. We're going to do mathematical induction. Very good point. Thank you. Anna, we can only do two days of mathematical induction, not five. I'm sorry. No, Hannah, we will not do eight days of mathematical induction. Settle down. Oh. You need to take a break from everything, even math, right? No, no. That's where you say no, Garrett. Okay. Everybody got it? Got it? Yes. I give you those three pages uh, that you have from Trig, and then you get to write your own sheet of notes. Here we go. Infinite. Infinite geometric series. Determine if each geometric series converges or diverges. What do we look at? The first term or do we look at R? Which one? We look at R. Will this converge or diverge? Diverge. Number two, will it converge or diverge? No, it converges. If the absolute value of R is less than 1, then it converges. And the absolute value of negative 3 fourths is less than 1. So therefore, this converges. How about number 3? Converge. Or diverge. Number 5, what is R? R is a third. You take, say, 27 over 81 or 9 over 27 or 3 over 9, and you get R is one-third. So, therefore, it will converge. Ooh, 6. How do I figure out the R value? 17.75 divided by 7.1. Is that going to be greater than 1 or smaller than 1? So, therefore, it diverges. Look at that. Number seven, I've got to figure out the R value. So I take 12 over 5 divided by the previous value. What's the previous value? Negative 3 over 1. So I will multiply by the reciprocal, sometimes a negative 1 over 3, and I get negative 4 fifths, right? So is that going to converge or diverge? Converge. And, you know, you can divide whichever ones you want here. I'm going to choose the last two here. I'm going to take negative 16 over 25 and divide that by the previous term, 32 over 125, or multiply by the reciprocal. 
And 25 over uh, 125 over 25 gives me 5, and negative 16 over 32 gives me 2 in the denominator. So I get negative 5 halves. Converge or diverge? Diverge. You guys are so smart. Okay, if I want to figure out if these converge or diverge, again, I have to identify the R value. Can you tell what the R value is here? It's the number being taken to a power. 4. R is 3 over 2. Converge or diverge? Diverge. It's greater than 1. 11. R is 0.2. Converge or diverge? Yep, R is negative 1, 4, so it converges. Very good. All right, number 13. Before you even begin to find the sum, decide whether it converges or diverges. Does it converge or diverge? It converges. So I say the sum is equal to the first term, 3, divided by 1 minus the ratio. Yep, this is the equation wrote on the other side. So I have 3 over 1 over, what's 1 plus a fifth? Yep, 6 fifths multiplied by the reciprocal. And I get 5 halves. So that infinite series will add to 5 halves. We'll sum to 5 halves. 14, converge or diverge? Diverge. Hey, let's ask Connor about 15. Connor, what will 15 do? Very good. Solve for S. If it diverges, here, here's the deal. Hannah brings up a good question. She says, what if for 14, I said the sum was equal to the first term 1 over 1 minus negative 4. You'd get 1 fifth, which is a complete lie. The formula only works out if it converges. You can't apply the formula at all if it diverges. You do 16 on your own. Go. For Connor, I'm going to write a test that simply asks if it converges or diverges. No, you may not. Only Connor, because he's a pole vaulter. All right. Did you get two? Way to go. Flip it over. Look at 20. 20, what's R? R is negative 0.6. So this, it will converge. So the sum is equal to the first term. Divided by 1 minus negative 0.6, which is 1 over 1.6. Three-fifths. Use calculator, right? Okay, last one. I look at 21. What's five-eighths? I messed that up. Five-eighths. Oh, hold on. We, we, we got it. We, yeah, you go with her. We got to just do one more. Okay, one more, one more. Then you guys can go. Okay. Now, 21. Does it converge or diverge? Why? Because the R value is negative one fifth. So, sum is equal to, first we need the first term. How will we get the first term? What will we plug in? One. One minus one is 
anything to zero powers times five is so we get five up top and then on the bottom we have one minus r is negative one fifth so we have five over one over six over five multiply by the reciprocal Point five over six very good your assignment is to complete the problems that we didn't. You have all day tomorrow to work. And then Wednesday, study guide. Test on Thursday. Friday, we won't be here. Well, some of us, because we got the big nine track meet. Go have fun. Do some math. Get lost. <laughs>